Hello, this video is on functions. Specifically, it's on inverse functions. As shown here in the syllabus. A function is a rule that maps an input value x to a single output value called f of x. You may have called it a function machine in the past. In the example shown, the function that doubles an input value and then adds on 3 would map 4 to 11. An inverse function is a rule that undoes what the original function did, and you may have called it an inverse function machine in the past. The inverse function for the previous rule would map 11 back to 4, as shown. We can think of this as two machines, where the second machine undoes what the first machine did. So whatever value is entered into the first machine, that value is then returned as the output from the second machine. The inverse function, denoted f to the minus 1, of a function f, reverses the effect of the function f. So the inverse function undoes what the function did. In the example shown, the function f maps 4 to 11, and the inverse function, f to the minus 1, maps 11 back to 4. We write f of 4 is equal to 11, and inverse f of 11 equals 4. So the inverse function reverses the effect of the function. So in general, if f of a is equal to b, then inverse f of b is equal to a. In the example shown, given f of x, we're asked to find inverse f of 22. So if inverse f maps 22 to a, then f of a must equal 22, as can be seen in the mapping diagram. So we equate f of a equal to 22, and we solve the equation, given 7. So inverse f of 22 is equal to 7. A function can only have an inverse function if the function is a one-to-one -one function. For example, the many-to-one function f, shown, does not have an inverse, because if you know the output was 19, it's impossible to determine whether the input was negative 4 or 4. Whereas the one-to-one -one function g of x, shown, does have an inverse, because if you know the output was 11, then you know that the input value must have been 4. The mapping diagram for the function and its inverse illustrates the relationship between the domain and the range. In this mapping diagram, the function f maps from left to right. The domain of f is on the left, and the range of f is on the right. In this mapping diagram, the inverse function maps from right to left. The domain of the inverse function is shown on the right, and the range of the inverse function is shown on the left. So the output of f becomes the input of inverse f, and the input of f becomes the output of inverse f. We can simply remember that the domain and range of a function and its inverse interchange. In the mapping diagram shown here, the domain of the function f, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, are shown on the left, and the range of f, the numbers 5, 7, 9, 11, are shown on the right. In this mapping diagram shown the inverse function, the domain of inverse f, the numbers 5, 7, 9, 11, are shown on the right, and the range of inverse f, numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 are shown on the left. Again, simply remember that the domain and range are interchanged. When you find the inverse of a function, 
you are making the output of f the input of inverse f and the input of f the output of inverse f. So graphically you are swapping over the x and y coordinates. This means that the graph of the inverse function is a reflection of the graph of the original function in the line y equals x as shown in the diagram. For example we can see that f of 3 is equal to 9, 3 maps to 9, and inverse f of 9 is equal to 3, 9 maps back to 3, and these points are a reflection in the line y equals x. In this question, given f of x, we're asked to find inverse f of 16. To do this, we need to reverse the statement. So if inverse f of 16 is equal to a, then f of a must equal 16, as can be seen in the mapping diagram. And so we write an equation, equating f of a to 16. And we can solve the equation using solver on the calculator. From the main menu, if we select equation, And then press F3 for solver, and F2 to delete any previous formula, and F1 to confirm the deletion. Typing in the equation, so that's 2, take away, then pressing the fraction button, and the X variable button, with a down cursor, and the X variable button again, plus 3, and then the right cursor to come back up, and shift to access equals and then 16. Pressing execute to enter the equation. And just to note that the number next to x is not the solution to the equation as we haven't pressed solve yet. Pressing F6 to solve the equation. We see that x or a in our case is equal to negative 2.8. So inverse f of 16 is equal to negative 2.8. In this question, the graph of the function f is shown alongside, and in part a we're asked to use the graph to find inverse f of 9. So again, we need to reverse the statement. If inverse f of 9 is equal to a, then f of a will equal 9. So we're trying to identify what number maps to 9. If we identify 9 on the y-axis and draw a horizontal line to the function and a vertical line down to the x-axis, we see that a equals 4. So f of 4 is equal to 9 and therefore inverse f of 9 must equal 4. In part b we're asked to solve the equation inverse f of b equals 1. We need to reverse the statement. So if inverse f of b equals 1, then f of 1 will equal b. And b is the output when 1 is mapped with function f. So identifying 1 on the x-axis, I'm drawing a vertical line to the function and a horizontal line across to the y-axis. We see that f of 1 is equal to 3. So inverse f of 3 must equal 1, which means that b is equal to 3. In part a of this question, we're asked to sketch the graph of the function and to then state its range. Using the calculator to draw the graph, from the main menu, select graph. And type the equation into y1. So that's shift to access the square root button, and then pressing the x variable button, and then subtract 2, pressing execute to enter the equation. And then pressing F6 to draw the graph of the function. To identify the x-intercept, we press F5 for G solve, and then F1. For the root. 
we see that the x-intercept has coordinates to comma zero. The domain of this function, as stated in the question, is x is greater than or equal to two. And to find the range, we press F1, trace, and re repeatedly scroll right. We see that as x gets bigger, y gets bigger as well. So the range is f of x is greater than or equal to zero. Making a neat sketch as shown. In part b we're asked to sketch the graph of the inverse function and to state its domain and range. If we begin by drawing the line y equals x and then reflecting the graph of the function in this line to give the graph of the inverse function as shown. To state the domain and range of the inverse function we simply interchange the domain and range of the original function. So the domain of inverse f is x is greater than or equal to zero and the range is inverse f is greater than or equal to 2.